four. Go four is hot. Really, really hot. And extraordinarily few, but it's becoming more important. This is going out bad mathematics of others. These are others. There are extraordinarily few of them. Firstly, what do I mean by calling out bad math? Two things. One, stupid math. So math being done by people who were not trained mathematicians. Two, real math. Math being done by mathematicians, but in an irresponsible or intentionally harmful way. And there's slightly different strategies. So there was a case a few years ago, Sally Clark, she was born in the UK. One of her children died of, of, of cot death, and then a year or two later, the second child died of cot death. And some, who's heard of this case? Some pediatrician came along, he actually had this, 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 this format of this rule that the police were using across the country, it was called so and so as well, I forget his name. That the chance of having two stillbirths in, in a family requires police investigation. Because the chance of one stillbirth is, is 1 over n, or n was, was, it, was it a million or something? Yeah. So the chance of two stillbirths must be 1 over n squared. Right? Because that's just how math works, right? <laughs> because these are definitely not correlated at all. So, Sally Clark was, was investigated because her second child died of cot death. She was tried, she was found guilty, she was jailed. And then the Royal Statistical Society said, hang on. These are correlated events. So 1 over n squared is not the right mathematics to do. So they came to the rescue two years later. It took the Royal Statistical Society two years to issue a statement saying, uh, actually, you, you, you made up the mistake in line four. And then she was eventually you know, retrialed and, and, and freed. Of course, by this point, her life had completely kind of crumbling down around her, and three years later, she died of alcohol poisoning. Depression, she was never drinking that. When she had her original trial, who could question the maths that this pediatrician was using? Her defense lawyer? The judge? No one. He was using math. He was a doctor. When you're using mathematics, to the lay public, it puts a Teflon shield on your argument. And if I try and make a counter-argument to stick on that, it'll just fall right off. Because I'm using math. So unless you have a mathematician come up and scrutinize it, it's impenetrable. And this was the case in a court case. Her life was destroyed. The Royal Statistical Society did come to the rescue, but they took too long. And thus it becomes our job, and the RSS did do this, at least they tried, to call it out. What about these prison sentencing algorithms I've mentioned to you before? Using this really dumb weighted sums to decide how long someone should get a prison sentence for. Mathematicians are now coming and trying to, 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 to analyze these things mathematically and expose you know, the, the, the deep-rooted bias and the, 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 that comes out of these things. How many mathematicians here want to take up life as a as a defense lawyer? <laughs> because they'd be good work for it. Because some of these cases are really, really shit. Yeah. 
I'm sure in prosecution the same thing could happen as well. I'm sure a defense lawyer could, could use some kind of mathematical defense. Someone is clearly guilty. So that's what I mean by calling out dumb math. Then there's smart math. That's genuinely hard. Because you're trying to call out people who know mathematics and who are deliberately or accidentally, probably deliberately in this, in this case, using it for harm. The best, really the only example I have of this is Paul Olivier de Hay. Well, he went through and did the mathematical work to properly analyze what Cambridge Analytica was doing and how they were siphoning through Facebook and what they were doing and, and, and everything they were processing. The journalists suspected it. Carol Cadwaller, who won an award today for journalism, suspected it for ages. But they were trying to play the piano with, 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 with mittens. Bam, 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 this is not working. You're a mathematician, now your fingers. <laughs> now you can actually get a feel for and analyze what's going on. He did that of his own accord. He started drilling into what Cambridge Analytica was doing. This is hard because now you're fighting with actual mathematicians, real ones, who have masters and PhDs as well. CA was 100 data scientists. His job to do it? Was it the Royal Statistical Society's job to write a commentary on the Sally Clark case? Whose job is it? Where does responsibility lie? Who should be doing this? When it comes to using stupid math or using smart math, only a trained mathematician can call these things out for what they are. Where are the only ones who can do this? And I said, when the process is steeped in math, it has a lovely Teflon shield, and the public just can't make anything stick to it. It's only our understanding that can call it out and catch it. But there's no incentive to call out stupid math. For starters, as a practicing mathematician, what do I get for it? Do I get promotion? No. Do I get some money? No. Do I the back? No. Do my colleagues notice? No. Why would I do it? And we the thing we can finish with this. So most of us, all of us, have practically no incentive to do this. So finding people to operate at this level extraordinarily hard. They're like diamond dust. <clears throat> We're good at calling out real mathematicians in an academic context. <laughs> Someone has a, a mistake in their paper, we'll point that out in our paper. We might even have some, you know, pretty intense email exchanges. We might reject the paper because it's wrong, this is a thing. So we'll call out mathematicians in, in our community because there is an incentive mechanism there. But are we going to call out mathematicians outside of our community? Why bother? What is leading us to do that? What's the reward at the end? Apart from there will be a better world. And I sort of summarize this with we need to think about what then? We need to go out and hunt them down, literally. Because it's not going to happen easily. <clears throat> it's not going to happen with uh, actual mathematical effort. Genuine mathematical effort. Let me, let me roll through and then and I'll take questions. <laughs> Tell me, it's not, you know, it's not our job to do this, to do any of this. It's not our job to teach everything in math. It's not our job to take things apart. It's not our job to pull out bad math levels. Okay, if you're walking down the street and you see someone fall over and, and hurt themselves, you're walking along and you see a, a child who's hit by a car. 
Is it your job to stop and help them? Is it your job to render assistance? I'm not saying to the driver of the car, I'm saying you're walking along, somebody falls and, and, and hurts themselves, you know, blood pouring out of their face or something like this. A child on a bike, lunch by a car, falls over themselves. It's not your job to help them. It's no more your job than anyone else's. But you find yourself at that opportune moment in that opportune scenario to render assistance where no one else can. There is a problem in society, in this case someone's bleeding out on the ground, and you're the only one there who can see it and act upon it. Maybe the child has three other friends with them, but they're also all nine years old, so they can't really do anything on their phone. Maybe the person who was walking down the streets and, and, and tripped over was an elderly person, and they have an elderly friend with them who can't even help them off the ground. So you're the only one there who can see the problem, and you have the, and the only one has the capacity to also act on the problem. Now maybe you choose to keep walking. It's not your job to help. Just like many mathematicians choose to keep walking. It's not our job to do any of this. You can make that choice. But, if you want to tell your children or grandchildren one day that you did that, watch them judge you. You want to go to the pub afterwards, and say, oh, I saw someone, you know, fall over and break their leg. What'd you do? Nothing, just keep walking. Tell that to your friends. And watch them judge you. How is this any different? I can see something bad going on that no one else can see. I'm in a position to act on it, but no one else is. Nah, keep walking. That is the difference. The same reason that society has an expectation on people to pick up problems and deal with them happens for us as mathematicians. And ultimately, this can be really hard and it's difficult to see where to begin. So, like, how do I go on the hunts? How do I get a seat at the table? How do you, well, where would I even start? I know there's anything from that way to now. What to actually do tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. when I want to act on this? My advice to you is this. If you want to do good, and you don't know where to begin, start by finding someone who's helping people. And go and help them. And if you spend enough time with those people, then other opportunities for you to help out of your own initiative will present themselves. If it's not clear where to begin, go and find someone who found where to begin. And give them a hand. Trust me, they need it. And I think I'm done for today, and for this series, so thank you. Now there were two or three questions before we break for extra tea. So, so, I'm calling out the, 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 the idiot's math. You're like a hunter hunting a dodo. It's kind of waddling along in a stupid way, and okay, you can find it, and just boom, bye. With calling out the math of our additions, you're a hunter hunting a hunter. Because if they're using it maliciously, they're actually trying to use a mathematical work to, to, to I don't know, gain something or do something that, I mean, maybe they're not deliberately trying to hurt the world, but they're trying to gain a lot for themselves and hunt the world in the process. They're hunting. They're hunting something else. They're hunting some sort of some sort of gain over here, and so it's up to you to hunt them. And it's extraordinarily difficult. Really, really, really difficult. That is the hardest thing, and that's the only one where I only have one example. Somebody doing something like that. Because of how difficult it is. Because you've got to see 
You've got to look at a scenario and see, okay, what was done? How is this put together? Who could have been behind this? How do I expose that? It's not, you know, 1 over n squared, oh, there's no correlation on this, it's done. It really is work. And a lot of this is work. And as you go along, okay, this is, this is the work. And as you go along these levels, the work requirement goes up substantially. It's like, you know, part 1a, 1b, part 2, part 3, uh, and graduate work or something. I mean, this is, this is serious stuff. It's not something you can do in an afternoon. Maybe this level 1 stuff you might be able to do in an afternoon or a week. You know, it makes some small change in your workplace or something. When you get to level 2, that's a long project. I've been doing this two and a half years now. Level 3, that's a lifestyle change. Level 1 and 2, you're still working as a mathematician. But just saying different stuff. The place where you sit and work doesn't change. Level 3, you literally move office. The work you do changes completely. This is moving out of your comfort zone. There are people who do it, but it's very hard. Any more questions? Here's what we've got, here's how not to use it. Don't try this at home, kids. And I'm sure it's not just France. How many journalists do you know of with a math degree? I mean, journalists, lawyers, lawmakers, regulators, all sorts of professions which, whose job it kind of is to call this stuff out. But they have, they have a, as I said, they're playing a piano with mittens. It's, I mean, they're doing something, but it's, it's not anywhere near, near as effective. Unless they have our help in understanding what's, what's going on. And yeah, they're just, I mean, they're not trained. I mean, it's up to us to actually look for the, the telltale signs, the whistle, some sort of high-pitched whistle. It's sort of like these little trails that mathematics leaves. But most people don't quite realize what's going on, but we, we listen to it for two seconds and go, oh, yeah, I know what that is. I, I, can, I can hear and think exactly what's going on there, because I have 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years of mathematical training. Don't forget also, anyone that comes into a math degree already has about five years of fairly intense mathematical training. Self-imposed mathematical training. So once you finish your math degree, you've got 10 years. Once you finish your PhD, you've got 15 years. That's a lot. That's what it takes to understand this stuff. To, to, to pick up stuff in our own community. Mm. Now, anyway, in, in, in all these seminars, I, I'm not going to wade into the discussion of plagiarism and, 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 and the way journals behave. Other mathematicians have done this. Timothy Gower is here, it's actually you know, instigated quite a lot of action in various, you know, pariah um, uh, uh, journals, you know, people are scraping money left, right, and center. You know, for, for, for journals that run purely for profits, uh, using and uh, exploiting libraries, exploiting uh, researchers. So, so some mathematicians have taken this upon themselves, but that is just in the context of academic mathematics. I've not come across academic mathematicians really going outside academia. So, okay, you, 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 you're writing fake papers to send to journals to prove these journals are, are, you know, are, are publishing crap. That's a thing to do. I can think of better things to do. I can think of much better things to do. Much better use of your time. Rather than writing a whole fake math paper that sends a journal to prove that a journal's bullshit. 
It's an alright thing to do. But I don't rate it anywhere near in this. Maybe it's a tiny, tiny, tiny corner of... Where would I put it? Maybe somewhere between level 1 and level 2, something like this, but it's a very small, it's a small impact thing to do. Okay, there, 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 there's a semi dodgy journal. That's not really going to improve the lot of the world in any great deal, given how much work it takes. This must have taken some a lot of time to produce and to go to all the effort of submitting it. Just to prove a point. That's not really good. We like proving points. What does that actually change? You know, Paul Olivier de Hay, when he, when he started digging into Cambridge Analytica, he changed stuff. The Royal Statistical Society, when they started examining Sally Clark case, they changed something. They were a bit late, they changed something. Real. That's different because you're trying to bring more knowledge and understanding to, 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 to quite the private places. So is that, I see that as very, I, I personally, and this is my opinion, I see that as, as, as a much more worthwhile and noble thing to be doing than and sending fake math papers to journals to try and pick out dodgy journals.